How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel or for many of you on this video, welcome to the channel. My name's Pete, my channel is Pete's Carport and we work on a lot of Mercedes. My wife in particular has a BMW, it's a 2010 550 IGT that you see right over there and yes it has the N63 motor which is the 4.4 liter V8 twin turbo. Awesome motor for power but it does have its failure parts and that's what we're gonna be working on today. So we're gonna be changing out the crankcase vent hoses, and this is them right here. So you've got cylinders one through four and five to eight. So this includes both of the hoses. Um, it's something I've already taken apart. I tried to temporarily fix, and I'll show you guys that when we pull it out. But this is more of a permanent fix. So these are the actual parts. I picked these up on Amazon, and I wanna say they were just over 50 bucks for both hoses shipped to me and it came next day, so pretty sweet. Let's go ahead and, and open up this box, and I figured might as well lay it out on top of the new BMW of the channel, which is the E30. This is a 1991 318i, and it is a manual, and it is gutted to be drifted. So I'll post that video in the link if you guys are new to the channel and you wanna check that out. Okay, so this is the part here. So typically what happens is this, uh, over time, there's a lot of heat generated in this area, which um, definitely wait till your engine cools down before even attempting this. I'll try to mention that several times because I've burned my hand uh, even waiting 30 minutes or so after running the car. Uh, that at part of the engine stays very hot on some of the pieces you gotta take off. So with that said, this gets brittle. It'll crack over time. Sometimes it slightly leaks and you'll start getting random uh, codes uh, pulling up on your check engine. Uh, even miss uh, firing, uh, injectors not working because what happens is uh, your car will shut down that side of the engine and uh, start throwing codes for misfires. And that's what's been happening to my wife. What I did was I cut this part off, cut this part off because you can use a razor blade, slice it, slice it, pull that apart and I ran a hose in between here. But the problem was it was a rubber hose, I think it was a heater hose, and I'll show you guys that when we take it out. And that basically shrunk up after so many uh, days of driving, and uh, on a long trip it shrunk up, and of course she had a engine, or a basically a drivetrain malfunction code, and couldn't drive the car over a certain amount of miles an hour, so definitely not fun. What you'll need to take this off, you're going to need a flat head because we're going to have to take off our air hose, and I'll show you guys this obviously, and a T30 Torx. So that's going to basically take the screws off that you see right here. So a very simple um, procedure because you're just going to unclip, unclip, slide that off once you access this, and then you just have two T30s. Uh, this one's a little more difficult to get to, so if you can use like a... Um, L-shaped tool, it does make it easier. But let's go ahead and open up the engine. I'll show you guys how to access this and how to swap it out. Okay guys, so the first thing you wanna do is remove this cover here. It's very simple. Um, you're gonna basically pop it loose. Mine's already loose on this side. And you're gonna pop it right there. It's basically popped into these little prongs here and then you have some prongs in the back and you've got this little plate that pops in the, the front area here. Make sure you set that off to the side somewhere where uh, you're not gonna damage it. The next thing we're gonna do is take off this uh, front hose clamp here so that we can access this piece here so we can pull this apart from here. So I'm gonna go ahead with a flat head. And then we're going to wiggle this to come loose from this area like so. Now there's one more hose that's right here. This one, um, what I usually do is I get the flat head inside of there, uh, slide it in and then wiggle it loose. Before we wiggle that loose, it's actually best to remove this here. There's a little prong up underneath. Once again, these get very brittle, so just be careful taking them apart. Uh, that will then allow us to uh, wiggle this back area here. So that's popped in back there. And then if you look right here, that's kind of slid up under there. And then what you can do is kind of pull this up while sliding your screwdriver in there and rocking this piece forward. That's gonna allow you to separate these two. It usually goes, it comes apart pretty easily, um, but don't force it. Make sure you take your time wiggling it. Thank you. 
now that we've got this all apart right here, we want to make sure all of our wires are out of the way and we can then slide this box back to basically undo that part right there. And uh, that's gonna allow us to basically now lift this up this direction so it clears everything and then slide it right out. Now you wanna make sure you set this off to the side somewhere where it's not gonna get damaged. And that is now going to allow us to access in here to get to the hoses. So this is our T30 and T30. And like I said, the one back here doesn't have as much clearance. So if you've got the L-shaped um, T30 Torx, you can get that in there a little bit easier, but you can still access it with the long screwdriver type like I have. So let's go ahead, we'll start with there, and I'll show you guys how to undo the other end of this and move all this out of the way. Now you gotta wiggle this because there's actually clips on the inside to get this to come loose. Okay, so two things, you wanna make sure you pull this fully out so that you can pull these apart now. Keep in mind the prongs that are on this little hose right here are not going to be replaced so you definitely want to be careful with those. These ones, the new hose actually has the new clips. So I'm going to start with this using a flathead screwdriver very gently or if you have a plastic pry tool, you basically want to pull this uh, this direction while lightly opening up these prongs with a flathead screwdriver. So when removing the one that has a little hose coming off, you can actually grab, if you've got small enough hands, grab the hose and pull down on it while uh, prying the prongs. I found that to be a little bit easier, figured I'd fill you in on that. Unfortunately, to access removing this right here, you've got to get up underneath uh, the turbos, which there's a lot of things to remove to get down in there. So to avoid that, you just got to kind of take your time and wiggle it loose. It will come loose. One other thing that you are going to notice is there's going to be a little bit of oil inside of these. That is one of the downfalls of um, modern cars or specifically turbo cars. You get your plugs fouled out, etc. because of the way that this system works. Unfortunately, a um, catch can, which I really, really wanted to hook up, is near impossible unless you're doing some crazy modification. There's just not enough room to reroute these hoses to a catch can. So I wanted to do it, I had it all set up and I just could not get it to fit nicely in there. And so I just gave up and said, you know what, if I have to change my spark plugs out every 30, 40,000 miles for failing out, I can do that. On the other negative side is uh, you get carbon buildup. So that is something you are gonna have to face with these cars, unfortunately. Now this is gonna slide back in Basically, the easiest way I found it is you want to kind of slide it, sorry, slide it up in between all of these. One thing I forgot to mention is on this uh, rail here, you can take this end clip off and then you can actually pull that up to make it easier to slide in your hose and pull the old hose out, obviously. Just get it in there till you get it positioned right. And then you want to connect this line and that line and then pull this down, slide it in and reattach your screw. So let's do that now. When putting these back in, make sure you got the right one. I grabbed the wrong side the first time. So you do have a left and, and right side. So for this back one here, it's very, very difficult to get it in without cross threading. Um, finally, after finagling for 30 minutes almost, I finally got it. And I still think it might have slightly cross threaded at the end because it was tough to tighten this thing down. What I'm going to do for the other side, because I had issues on the other side when I first took this thing apart, was um, I'm going to put like a hex bolt in there so I can use more of a flex socket extension to really get that in there and make it go in straight because you don't want to cross thread that and not be able to change that out or, you, or cross thread that and not be able to tighten it down because then it will not function properly either. Make sure you clip this back in and you've got all your wires up and out of the way. 
and then we're going to tuck them back in there nicely once we get everything hooked back up. All right, I'm going to slide this into place here. This hose should, this rubber one, you can basically wiggle it back on. Sometimes you got to move the clamp down. That's what I'm going to do here. So you might need to loosen the clamp up a little bit more than you had it to get it off. And then you could wiggle it to slide it on. Don't worry, everything will go. Looks like that's about on there. There we go. Now it slid into place. And then the one down here, what you're going to do is now it's kind of loose, so you're just going to slide. Um, this part's going to slide forward. Make sure you just line it up onto there and it will snap right in. There you go, you can hear a click on that one. Make sure this is all lined up right, slide our clamp back, and we're just gonna tighten our clamps up. With these up here, you've got um, your little clips here. Mine are broken on the other side. I think I'm good on this side. And you just wanna run everything down this area properly. Also, uh, let me show you guys the little quick fix that I did here. It seemed like it was going to hold up, but if you see here, what happens is um, air suction through it and it kind of twists and then it bends because it's too flexible. So you do need a hard plastic. One of the options I had for fixing this was to put a um, basically one of those uh, barbed um, adapters that would have the same size on both ends to kind of stiffen this. At the end of the day, the replacement parts that are the exact ones you need were only $50 and it replaced all these little broken prongs and you can see there's only two left out of the four that should have been on there so i highly suggest just doing what i did going to amazon which i'll leave the link getting the new parts fairly easy to change like i said one thing is you if you have uh, check engine codes you are probably gonna have to clear those uh, the first time i did this when i put these hoses on i started it and turned it off a few different times cycled it and the check engine light went away okay let's hope for no check engine light Okay, so I let it run for about 10 minutes or so to warm up, and um, I turned it off, restarted it. Let's see, yep, and check engine light is off. The only light you got is a parking brake, seat belt brake, and obviously door open. So that did work by cycling it. As long as you fixed your issue, it's going to reprogram the computer after so much time of realizing that it's getting the proper airflow through the PCV and all that's good. So that's one way to do it, guys. Or you can reset it with an OBD2 port, which comes down here. There's actually a little plate that opens up. Most auto parts stores are going to scan it for you, but they will not reset the code for you. A few of them will let you reset it yourself because they can get in trouble if they reset it. So just keep that in mind. You may need to get your own scanner or go to a mechanic that you know they should not charge you for that. Like in my case, I just cycled it a few times and it was good. Once again, my name's Pete. This is Pete's Carport. I hope this helped you guys out. I'm very excited that my wife can now get back on the road without having any check engine lights come on, any uh, drivetrain malfunctions. Got everything back nice and tidy in here and uh, it's good to go. So let's take it for a ride. You guys have a great day. My name's Pete. This is Pete's Carport. Have a blessed week.